You may have heard about completing the square before, or maybe this is your first time, but let's just state or explain why do we call it completing the square. First of all, it is a way of going from standard form to vertex form, because as you remember, vertex form has that uh, x minus h squared, and that's what we're trying to create as square. h minus x squared means that it's going to be h minus x and h minus x, which makes it a square. When I have something like this, x squared plus 6x plus a number that I don't know what it is, that's when we talk about completing the square. What number do I need to add to complete the square? <laughs> How does this make any sense? Well, we know that x squared is an x tile like this, green one, and 6x are the six x tiles like this one, the long ones. So if I want to make a square, I'm going to grab three of this, put them on the side, and three of that, and put on that side. And then I need to add a number of unit tiles that will this make the whole thing. Now you can probably see that this is three by three. You're gonna put nine tiles, right? So you may have memorized that you need to get half of this and square it. Well, why? Well, because half, because you're gonna put half of them at the bottom, half of them on the side, and then you create a square that is those two numbers multiplied together. Does that make sense? So there are three cases. For completing the square. First case, it's when you've got two terms and no number at the back. So this is what you're gonna do. If I've got x squared plus 8x, I know I'm gonna put 4 on the side and 4 on the bottom, which means that I need to add 4 by 4, I need to add 16. But 16, I'm going to add 16 tiles to make this a perfect square. But I can't just randomly add stuff. If I add 16, I'm changing my parabola to go up 16 spaces. So what I'm gonna do, and it's gonna look very silly, is I'm gonna subtract 16 at the same time. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense because that doesn't change anything. But that's the point, that is not changing anything. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to factor these three guys. Now that was 2 times 4, right? The 8x. And that's how I got the 4 squared. So I know that these guys are just x plus 4 squared. So those 4 numbers, 33 numbers, are x plus 4 squared. That x plus 4 squared represents these 3 numbers. And then this minus 16 is left over, so i got to write it down. Minus 16. And there we have vertex form already. And I'm going to go one more step and say, therefore, the vertex for this is minus 4 and minus 16, which, you, which we can get from vertex form pretty easy. So what's the second case? The second case is we have a number here. x squared plus 6x plus 5. Now, that's not going to make me a perfect square because I need to put 3 on the side, 3 on the bottom, and I need to add 9 to make it a full square, right? Because it's 3 by 3. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to add brackets x squared plus 6x. I know I'm going to need to add a number and subtract the number, which is that silly stuff. Uh, so I'm going to add and subtract the number. And I'm going to leave that plus 5 outside. That last number I'm never going to touch until the very end. So it's plus 5. Okay, what number do I add now? Well, if I put 3 on the top and 3 on the bottom, I'm going to get 3 squared over here. And 3 squared is 9. So I have 9, and I subtract 9. And I just remind myself that, hey, this is 2 times 3. So now I know that these three numbers I created by making a square can be rewritten as x plus 3 squared and now I'm left with this minus 9. Now something's going to happen with this minus 9 and that has to come out of the bracket and gets multiplied by the number in front of the bracket. This will make sense on the next step. But the number in front of the bracket is a 1. So I just multiply by 1, and that stays the same. 
So that minus 9 stayed as minus 9. And the plus 5 stayed at the plus 5. And now the last step is just to put that minus 9 and that 5 together because we're collecting like terms. So then this in vertex form will become x plus 3 squared minus 4. Okay, I'm going to go again one more step and state the vertex. They may not have asked money for this, but minus 3 and minus 4 is the vertex for, for this particular problem. So the last case, case number 3, I'm going to do two examples for this, is when I have an A value, basically a number in front of the x squared. Okay, so I need to do one extra step. And that is, I need to factor out that number. See, vertex form is x minus h, everything squared. It's nothing besides the x inside the bracket. So I always need to start with x squared. So I'm going to factor out this minus 2 from the first two terms. That last term, one more time, it's going to go outside. It doesn't really matter. Even though the minus 2 goes into the 40, I don't care. Just leave it outside, don't touch it. So we're going to go minus 2, factor it out, x squared. Now 20 divided by minus 2, it's minus 10. x. And now I need to add, subtract the number to make it a perfect square. And then add the plus 40. Again, the plus 40, leave it outside. If you put it inside and come outside, you're going to make a mistake. So what number do I need to add? Well, if I've got 10, I'm going to put 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom. So it's going to be 5 times 5 is 25. Nice. 25 and 25. This was 2 times 5 because I put 5 on top and 5 on the bottom. And that means that this is minus 2 x. Now, there were minus tiles, so it's x minus 5 squared. Now, the 25 comes outside and it gets multiplied by the number in front. Now, there is a number in front, so that's a minus 2. What's minus 25 times minus 2? Well, that's plus 50. And I still have the plus 40 from before. So this ends up being a vertex that's going to be very high because now i got to put those two together. Oh, this is very nice. And it's minus 2 x minus 5 squared plus 9. Right? If I go one last step, one further step, and I state the vertex, I know the vertex is going to be 5 and 90. Good. So I'm going to do one more example on this case number 3 for you to practice. You may want to just stop the video right there. Give that a try, and then check the answer with me. So one more time. I'm going to expand, so we factor out this 4. And I've got x squared minus 4x. I need to add a number, subtract the number, and then the plus 20 stays outside. Right? I never leave that one inside of my bracket. So if I've got 4, I'm going to put 2 on top, 2 on the bottom, and 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm going to add 4. If I add 4, I need to subtract 4. I know that sounds silly, but it works out nicely for us. And I know that these 3 guys will become, well, it's 4 outside, x minus 2 squared, because I put 2 on top and 2 on the bottom. And that minus 4 comes outside, gets multiplied by the number in front, which is 4. And minus 4 times 4 it's minus 16 plus 20 so that's going to give us a mine uh, sorry plus 4 so we got 4 x minus 2 squared plus 4 and if we go with that last step we know that the vertex is going to be positive 2 plus 4